I, I <laughs> did not expect how graphic <laughs> it was. I mean, okay, I feel like I should have expected it, but seeing it in real time was just like, wow. My friends and I were like, wow. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Ramirez, and welcome back to another episode of the Hit List Podcast, a podcast where me and a guest cross off films from our watch list and discuss them. This is season six, episode four, and today I'm joined once again by the wonderful, the bombastic, and the amazing Sophia Fan. Welcome, Sophia. Thank you so much for being back here again. No problem. Bombastic <laughs> is a crazy word to use. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not sure if, it, if I'm using it correctly, but I like that word. It's like when you say the Spider-Man, you say the amazing Spider-Man. Mm. When you say Sophia Fan, you say the bombastic Sophia Fan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So before uh, we get started, you know, usual two questions. I try to change it up a little bit. I usually ask you if you if your viewing habits have changed. Well, guess what? I'm not going to ask that this time. We're changing things up this time. I'm going to ask you, what are some movies you've seen recently? If you guys want to follow me on Letterboxd, you would know. You would, you specifically would know. I don't yeah. even... What have I watched? Let me look. <laughs> <laughs> You're checking letterbox. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the last movie that I watched was the movie that we're talking about today, so that'll be for later. Oh no, I've watched, I watched a bunch of things. It's it's ranged from you know the new Spider-Man movie. Like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, I watched Punch Drunk Love for the first time. Mm. Okay. I watched. I rewatched Jeepers Creepers. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a range. I watched World War Z for the first time. <laughs> Ooh, that's a. Uh, that's something. <laughs> that's a yeah. Movie. It truly was. I was like, hmm. I thought this would be better. <laughs> Listen, I need to talk about this real quick because when I when World War Z came out, the movie. I heard the book was amazing. I'm like, oh, I should probably check it out, you know? Mm-hmm. And while I was, I liked it at the time, but like, I was like, you know what? It could be better. And then mm-hmm. I read the book and it's like a documentary basically of how, what happened during the zombie apocalypse and how they recovered and what's going on in this world. It's like basically what's happening after the war. And oh, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry. Oh, my was that window's zombie? open. I'm pretty sure a bunch of motorcycles just passed by my house. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's really good. And then there's like a full cast audiobook with Mark Hamill in there. I didn't get I haven't had a chance to listen to it, but I heard it's like kind of like a PBS documentary style the way they did it. I'm like, yo, this would have been so much better if they just took it from the book. Like just take one event from the book and instead they just the only thing that's like the same that I remember is like the thing that happened in Israel where like it's like a wall around Israel mm-hmm. and they got infiltrated anyway. That's the only thing yeah. I, I think that's a connection. But yeah. Anyway, I recently watched Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Uh, last mm-hmm. week I saw Across the Spider-Verse, which I, I'm in love with that movie. Like mm-hmm. it, that movie is just a love letter to all kinds of animation um, from Legos to watercolors to... Um, collages, collage work, mm-hmm. loved it. And it's it's hard for me to watch movies lately because you know I've been I've gotten really busy this past few months. But yeah, my second question for you is, what's something about you that people would be surprised to know? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Okay, well, it's like, I feel like I'm generally, like, an open book, but I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what secrets I have. (laughs) It doesn't have to be Uh, a secret. It's just, like, something, like, you don't really disclose too much. Like, what's what's a hobby you do? Hobby? Yeah. (laughs) Um... Do you want me to share mine so it can help you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so most people would know this, but not everyone would know upon meeting me. But five years ago, I won a chance to go see Hamilton when it was first premiering in D.C. 
and I spent the day with Lin Manuel Miranda. So I went to the Watergate. You know, we I got to spend a night there. I spent the whole day with him basically, because we had breakfast together with him and his family, and then we went to the Museum of American History, where there was a naturalization ceremony happening, where people becoming U.S. citizens, and Jose Feliciano was performing there for them. And on the guitar, he was getting donated to the museum. And then we went back to the, like into the archives of the museum, saw like all of these props from like movies. I got to see the original Superman costume from 1979, the one that Christopher Reeve wore. And then after that, we took a little break and he went somewhere and then found out later he went to go see Obama. And I'm like, what? <laughs> And it turns out they almost had us go with them, but it would have been very last minute and they probably would have pissed off the security. So that's why they didn't bring us over. And it was also the same day they were shooting Wonder Woman 1984 there, like the day before they were shooting. So like the Watergate scenes there. Then we got to go to like the reception. I got to meet some billionaires. Didn't know they were billionaires. I met Chef Jose Andres. I didn't know who he was. Apparently it was mm -hmm. a big deal because like, uh, people were like taking photos with him, and I took a photo with him. Like I don't know who this guy is, but he seems interesting. <laughs> Turns is out he's he a on, like Master Chef. Yeah, he's he's, the one he's on like Master a. Chef, yeah? I I'm not sure if Master Chef, but like he's a very famous chef. He's like always does charity work. He will, like go to like crises crisis locations, like cook for people there. Mm. Um, and then the Watergate is very close to JFK Center, which is where they're performing. It's like you can walk there, but because Lynn is so famous. And it was like press night. We couldn't uh, risk him walking there because we will be like bombarded by people. So we got into like these two huge SOVs and then we were there. And then I could, see, it was like the first time I experienced like people like waiting to take a photograph of you as you, like, as you get out of the van. We mm -hmm. weren't in the same van, but like when I got out for, when I got out last in my van, people were like excited, like, hey guys. And they're like, who the hell are you? <laughs> And we were like almost like we were like late. We were running late, like right when we sat down. This is when they started, and yeah. you know saw the play for the first time. And like I don't, something that people most people don't know is I was obsessed with that musical a whole year before this. So mm -hmm. to have my session like met, I actually got to meet the creator, dude. I was like in the, on the inside. <laughs> I was like screaming, right? But on the mm -hmm. outside, I'm chill. I'm like the most polite person ever. Like, oh yeah, yeah, huge fan. Yeah, how do you breathe in between songs? You know, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> and got to see it for the first time because I never thought I'd actually see it. And this is before like the recordings out. And I only listened yeah. to the album, and I loved it. And then afterwards, I got to party with the Broadway cast, not the Broadway cast, but like, the cast of Hamilton. And I, Ooh. I felt like I was in a musical because everyone was dancing. They're all great dancers. And I broke my glasses <laughs> that night <laughs> because oh, like hard. <laughs> dude <laughs> and then the next day I had to go back to work I was a security guard fun yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's it was so hard going back after all of that you know and mm -hmm. I have a video of it on my personal YouTube channel and it's not the best one because it had only been like a year since I started editing. But I, I bet open with the glasses breaking. <laughs> <laughs> or like I put it on and it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's some some people, most people don't know about me. So I hope that helped you. Damn, when you asked that question, I, I thought it was more in the vein of like, oh, what kind of like traits like do you have that people don't know? <laughs> like Like something generic like that. How am I supposed to live up to a story where you met Lynn Mon Manuel Miranda? Uh, You've met me, so that's honestly it's on par. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> huh? I'm sure you have something. Um. Yeah, I'm sure I do have something, but I feel like when it comes to these kinds of questions, I blank out. Yeah. Okay, I guess. Um, okay, so I guess I can, I've mentioned this on, in, in one of my videos before, I forgot which one, it was just like a passing comment, I s talked about my teen years, so mm -hmm. when I, I think I was 16, and a bunch of friends and I, we traveled down to LA for um, a K-pop concert, mm. and we were in... Little Tokyo in LA 
and we we're just walking around the stores and then my friend was like oh my god isn't that skrillex and then i look what? over and it was yeah it was skrillex like randomly in little tokyo <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so we went up to him and we we're like are you skrillex <laughs> And then we had, like, we wanted an autograph, but we we didn't have anything. And, oh, no, 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 that's that's not what the story was. I'm, it's been so long, I'm blanking. So, what, I think he was high. Like, I don't think he was sober. So, when he had told us that he was looking, and I quote, this was his exact words. He was like, I'm looking for some paper without lines. And... <laughs> And then um, this person that we were with, he just like whips out like um, the back of a receipt and he hands it to him. And then Skrillex started laughing. Yeah. And then we took a picture together and it's somewhere in the depths of my Facebook. But yeah, I met Skrillex when I was 16. <laughs> that's that's actually really funny. That's a good one. Yeah. You had one. You had one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then when I went to uh, Coachella this year, and he was doing a set, in my head, I was like, I met you <laughs> when I was 16. <laughs> Yo, it actually reminds me, like, because, like, when we were on the ride home, it was, like, a different day, but, like, within the same week, my friend and I, because, like, I, got, I was able to bring a guest, and mm -hmm. we, were, we were listening to Hamilton, like, yo, we met this man. <laughs> we know him. He knows us. <laughs> and listen, I don't like to, I, I don't mean to brag, but I'm a flex a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was told that I was one of his favorite guests because he's done it before, and I was one of his favorite. I'm like, mm. ooh, okay. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> I was, I don't know. I was just really polite. I I didn't like uh, fanboy too much. Mm -hmm. I was just like very courteous with like his time. You know, he was being very generous with his time as well, like doing this for charity. Mm -hmm. And I just made sure to acknowledge that. I took a few pictures with him, and yeah, I don't know. I guess I was just chill, you know? He's like, oh, this little 21-year-old kid, you know? Even though I was, like, taller than him. <laughs> oh, that's another part of the story. Because when we were coming back from the JFK, we also, like, drove back still. Uh, there were, like, people waiting for him at, like, outside the Watergate, like, doors. And, like, mm -hmm. one of his autographs. And, like, we were just, trying, like, just, we were just trying to rush through because, like, he already spent too much time at JFK. And we were just trying to get to the after party. And he had security on his front his right and his back, but no one on his left. I'm like, oh shit, no one on his left. Hold up. And I go up there and I'm like on his left. We're like walking r real quick, right? <laughs> to get in there. And then I guess like the head of security is like, hey, don't want, come on. <laughs> and like, cause like he knew he was, uh, he he knew that like I was with them, but like, he's like, dude, it's my job. <laughs> I'm like, listen, there was no one there. I was just covering for him. And mm -hmm. we got in the elevator. I'm like, don't worry, man. I got you back and no Kung Fu. <laughs> and yeah, he laughed. <laughs> so yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I guess he liked my my jokes. Yeah. Not the security guard though. No, not, no, definitely not him. <laughs> he probably felt incompetent for a second there. <laughs> Listen, I'm a big guy though. Like, I I got him. <laughs> All right, let's get to the story to the to the topic of today. Mm -hmm. Today we'll be discussing eyes wide shut. Eyes Wide Shut is a 1999 erotic mystery psychological drama film directed, produced, and co-written by Stanley Kubrick. It is based on a 1926 novella, Chom Novel, by Arthur Schnitzler. The plot centers on a doctor who is shocked when his wife reveals that she had contemplated having an affair a year earlier. He then embarks on a night-long adventure during which he infiltrates a maxed orgy of an unnamed secret society. This film was on both of our lists. Sophia, why was this film on your list? It's been on my list for a while now, so I don't really remember when I added it. I feel like it was one of those sprees where I was kind of like just looking through movies and then I saw that the reviews were really good for this one. And, you know, I love Nicole Kidman, lukewarm about Tom Cruise. But Nicole Kidman. I, I knew that they were they used to be married so i was like oh like is this like one of those movies where they met on set and they got married but no i later found out they were already married which i feel like adds <laughs> to it you know um mm -hmm. but yeah 
Uh, and then I saw like the general like plot synopsis, and I was like, okay, it's about sex. <laughs> so like, must be steamy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I feel like I knew about this way two different ways. Like, I knew two different aspects of this film, but I never knew they were connected to each other until I saw it. Right. So like, mm-hmm. I knew about like the maxed orgy. Like I, I like the, the people with the Venetian masks um, and like the hooded figures. Like I'd seen that imagery so much around before, like on the internet, but like never really knew where it was from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew about the movie called Eyes Wide Shut with like Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, but I never really knew what it was about. I just knew it was like Stanley Kubrick's last film before he died. And there were rumors that it's what caused them to divorce Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. And wasn't until like I started like researching this film before I like watched. It. I'm like, oh, it's the same movie. <laughs> it's the same movie. There's two different things. Mm-hmm. And then you know I finally watched it. So I guess it's always been on my list, but like for two different reasons and never knowing yeah. which was the other. So mm-hmm. what did you think? <laughs> I don't know what to think of this movie. Um, certainly was the film. I would say <laughs> it really was like a movie, you know. <laughs> yeah, it felt like a movie. <laughs> it, it's like you um, know, Colt Kidman says, like at the movie here, this is where dreams come true. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I probably I probably would need to give it another watch to like solidify what I think about it. Um, but I will say. I think this movie is too long. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I like when I saw that it was two hours and 40 minutes, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then I just like, I don't know. There are so many parts where I wanted to, or not, not wanted to. I was zoning out and I was like, oh my God. Like, I just like, can it end? <laughs> I guess for me, the part where I was like zoning out, like I knew for sure I was zoning out is when his rich patient invites him over to his place to explain like hey stop investigating this whole thing and he goes over like i'm like yo dude i'm zoning out i don't need to know this and Mm -hmm. this isn't this isn't unique to stanley kubrick's films he's done this before like with like the shining and i just saw clockwork orange um i still need to finish it for like another episode this season Mm-hmm. And in Clockwork Orange, there's like this scene where they're just, you know, transferring into jail. He's like putting his belongings to like giving his belongings to like the police officer and then, tra- you know, doing fingerprints, you know, being inspecting and stuff. And it goes on for like a while. And I'm like, do we really need this whole thing? Like, we, can, we mm-hmm. know he's in jail now. You don't need to go. It's like over five minute scene of him like being transferred into jail. Mm-hmm. So him doing this for all his films, it's not uncommon essentially what did you think of tom cruise and nicole kidman in the role like in both the roles respectively okay as a married couple i mean i i considering that they were married in real life i mean obviously i could see the chemistry between the two like i could believe that they were married so when i was reading the letterboxd reviews a lot of people were like really praising their acting but i I thought that Tom Cruise's acting was like really stale and I was like I was like what's happening like I've seen his other movies and he does not act like this so I was like this is so interesting like this is the acting choices he's making and and like Nicole Kidman like she was barely in the movie she -hmm. wasn't um yeah because it was like mostly Tom Cruise and I I feel like I was, like, lukewarm about Nicole Kidman. I don't know. Okay, the scene... I thought the same. I thought the same. The scene where she was smoking the joint, and then she was, like, talking to him, and she would take... She would say, like, one word, and then take, like, a five-second pause, and then say the next word. I was like, that's not... That's not how weed works. Like, (laughs) I, I, I don't... I don't think I've ever encountered anyone high who, like, who has talked like that. And I was like, it's like, it's like she was trying to come across like both high and seductive at the same time. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I felt like. 
I don't smoke and I haven't spent enough time um, with potheads before. But I was like, you know mm-hmm. what? That's very odd. Like, I've never met Shaggy doesn't act like that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's hard for me to come up with questions for this film because, like, mm-hmm. it's like I'm kind of like a little indifferent to it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I felt like I was being gaslit. I was just like, oh my God, am I supposed to like this movie? Because I feel like I don't. Right. <laughs> like okay let's talk about like the the opulence of this film like the the privileged worlds that they encounter in this film mm-hmm. like what did you think of, was the reason that they went to like the party in the beginning like not just because like plot wise but what do you think that represented was okay, it that, was it a christmas a tr- party it was yeah yeah it was a christmas party um I don't know. I honestly didn't really have <laughs> thoughts about the party at as like the first party that they attended. It was like I thought it would just like set the stage, set the setting like oh, it's Christmas time and you know, they're rich white people in New York City. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a doctor and he saved this girl <laughs> or I don't know, he's just treating this <laughs> girl that like OD'd. And then, like, the weird scene with Nicole Kidman and that guy who, like, oh. really wanted to sleep with her. I was like, oh, my God. This man he is was trying. was pushy. I know. <laughs> I was like, bro, <laughs> calm down. I know. And she's entertaining him, too. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. One of you needs to stop. Um, yeah. I guess, like, that question is a little bit of a trick question. Not a trick question, but, like, me trying to be an English teacher for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but the thing that I kind of resonated with in that beginning of the film mm-hmm. was when Tom sees the, I, I'm saying his name, Tom, but you know, Tom's character, Bill. he sees, yeah, Bill sees one of his former classmates uh, performing the piano. Uh-huh. Uh, and he's like, yo, I used to go to med school with him. And his wife is like, oh, did, did he, I don't know a doctor who played the piano so good. It's like, no, he dropped out. And mm-hmm. he goes to talk to him. And recently, uh, a few months ago, I was still working at a retail store. I'm not going to expose myself. Um, and one of my high school classmates' mom showed up, and I don't think she knew who I was, but, like, I kind of just, like, introduced myself, like, oh, okay, um, did you go to college? Yeah, I went to college. Yeah, same as your daughter. And it's like, oh, she's like, oh, okay. Like, I could feel, like, a little bit, like, judgment there, like, and you mm, ended up here? Yeah. yeah. You ended up here? And, like, because, like, I... Um, transferred a little later than most and then graduate later than most and mm. it's been it had been three years since I graduated from university so I am still I was still going through it trying to find jobs while most of my peers from like high school and university were already well uh, into the careers and I was basically mm-hmm. starting out and I could feel that judgment like oh my daughter's the same age as you but she's like more far ahead than you and I was like shit and then after that, I met another uh, classmate from college who works in politics now. And she saw me. It's like, hey. And then she just, just moved away. Like, she just walked away. Mm-hmm. And I like, I kind of feel for the musician right here. Because, like, I've been yeah. in that position quite a few times where I'm in what many people consider, like, a lower position than they are. Yeah. And I guess I, I make them feel better because of that. Mm-hmm. So, I felt for the guy. Yeah. I, it wasn't more it wasn't me feeling bad for the guy but then like obviously they were like judging him because like he dropped out but mm-hmm. in my head when um bill was like oh he dropped out i was like oh yeah good for him because medical school mm. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like um i know a few people going through med school right now and I'm like, oh, yeah. dude, like, how are you holding up? Like, you, you sleep? <laughs> you eating? <laughs> and they're just like, yeah, <laughs> surviving. So this question, I'm still forming in my head. So if it sounds weird, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, what did you think of, like, the conversation they had where she finally admits that she contemplated having the affair the mm-hmm. year before like what was going for your mind okay i have my notes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you're, you're ready for this yeah, yeah. no nah, when the movie was going i was just like writing down 
typing out my notes. Not really notes. It was just me being like, what the fuck is happening in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Tom's character, Bill, he would be, he, he was saying like, oh, like, I don't have to worry about you cheating on me because I know you're a faithful wife. And then mm. like Nicole Kidman is like, Oh, well, like, psych jokes on you because I had it, like, in my head. Like, I was thinking that. And, like, she kept, like, pushing him. She's like, but, like, why do you think that? And in my head, I was like, she wants her feelings hurt. Like, why is she pushing right. so hard with these hypotheticals? Like, he trusts you. I don't know. Like, why do you want him to not trust you? Mm hmm Yeah. And, like, I don't know. It's... I was kind of split on her telling him about these fantasies because, like, on one hand, it, I I know it's, like, good to have open communication with your, like, in your marriage and, like, you want to be transparent and stuff. But I feel like at the same time, if you didn't cheat, I feel like, do you really need to talk about this fantasy that you had? Un right. I mean, unless it's, like, actively, like, ruining their marriage or something with her mm. fantasies in her head then yeah, like, you know, talk about it. But I feel like she never acted on it. She's like, she like, seems like she loves him. They're like a good family. So it's like, I don't know. Like, like I feel like because obviously it set Bill into a spiral later. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> it did it did way more damage than good. So I, 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 I don't want to blame it on the weed because I feel like, I don't know. Weed isn't like a truth serum. So. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just thinking about that too because she was like, oh, do you like touching women at your job? Like, And he's like, it's mm -hmm. my job and there's yeah, always exactly. a nurse present. So like, I don't know what you're trying to get at. And yeah. I was just thinking like, you know, if she, if, if I were married and my wife told me this, the way I would never recover. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. why did you have to tell me this? You didn't yeah, have exactly. to. Yeah, exactly. Like, you never acted on it, but you kept going on as to, like, what yeah, happened. Yeah. And, yeah, so that was, like, annoying. Not annoying, but that, I was, like, I can understand, like, how he could, he would be heartbroken. But, like, the things, but the, the way he handled it was yeah. not great as well. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was, <laughs> because, like, okay, when he ran into that, um, that prostitute, Domino, mm -hmm. later on, I was, like, What's he doing? Like, why is he going yeah. to her house? I was like, oh, bro, your wife didn't actually cheat on you, but you're, like, contemplating actually cheating on her? This is, right. like, oh. <laughs> he went scorched earth with this method. <laughs> this is also another comment that she said, like, uh, because I'm a beautiful woman, the only reason a man wants to talk to me is to fuck me. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I, I'm like, I'm thinking, like, you're a grown woman. You're not surprised? You're surprised by this? Yeah. I was like, anyway. Yeah, I... I I also, like, because when I was watching it with my friends, so it's, like, the three of us, another, like, one's a girl, and then, like, the other's a guy, and then we were all just, like, why is she asking that? I thought, like, she, she just, like, knew. Like, I thought that's just, like, a thing that, like, women understood that, like... Right! <laughs> like, I feel like, I mean, like, you know, not all men, obviously, but... <laughs> But like, it's so weird hearing being, a woman say that. Yeah, <laughs> when you're being approached, I feel like a lot of the times, like women, is, women are just like, oh, like they're trying to like hit on us. I that's just like the go-to thought. Exactly, and the way she was like, I was shocked about like, oh, you just want to fuck me, like. I know, and it it kind of <laughs> like my my um. I was kind of taken out of the movie because it's fucking Nicole Kidman saying it out of all people. <laughs> like, okay, like the when we first saw Nicole Kidman when she was wearing those glasses, I was like, wow, mm -hmm. she is so pretty. <laughs> so, and then she was like, I can't believe like men would come to me for like for sexual reasons. I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah. She's Nicole Kidman, and it always makes me laugh with Nicole Kidman is like that story she told Jimmy Fallon how like she was interested oh, in him, yeah. but he never caught on, and then she thought he was gay. 
yeah. and like yeah. he's like listening to the story in real time kind of like how Tom Cruise in this movie was like listening in real time like he's shocked by all this and Jamie mm-hmm. was like what and he like he never <laughs> he missed his opportunity and I may have fumbled the bag multiple times in my life but at least I never fumbled Nicole Kidman I can say that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but I feel like in his defense Nicole Kidman's a really beautiful woman, so I feel like if someone that gorgeous was flirting with me, I would be like, oh, she's so friendly. There's no chance oh, she wants true. to be with me. <laughs> yeah. I, that, yeah. I, that's happened to me many times. We're like, yeah. uh, I'm like, oh, she's probably just really friendly. Let's get back into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when he goes to visit his you know, patient who just died, um, he, he see, he meets his daughter and she's very like, you know, she's, she's sad, but like, he can kind of tell she wants him to come on to her. She's very mm-hmm. attracted to him. And then she says, all right, like, I'm in love with you. I love you. She's like, he's like, whoa, I don't even mm-hmm. know you. <laughs> yeah. Your father was my patient. That's it. I've only met you in passing like once or twice. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and I just thought that was like pretty awkward where like when her boyfriend eventually came over i was like oh yeah yeah but like the thing is he never told him because nothing happened you know yeah you you don't need to talk about stuff that never happened he may have contemplated it but it didn't happen the thing i found we we briefly talked about like the the prostitute right and how he's he almost goes through with it until his wife calls him Mm -hmm. and afterwards we learned that she was diagnosed with aids like the day before like the day of that Mm. he was um gonna hook up with her and i'm just thinking like the way his wife saved him in that moment that wasn't just like a bullet dodge that was like a direct missile crisis averted because back then uh we didn't have the the medicine that we have now that was considered a death sentence um back in the 90s Mm -hmm. so the way she saved him without even knowing and he was a little irritated at first, but like, you know what? Yeah. She saved your life, dude. <laughs> um, what did you think of the orgy? Like the ceremony the orgy? Okay. I mean, so before the orgy, like mm-hmm. there were some, there's some, some nude scenes. So I was like, okay, so I know what to expect. Like, I, I <laughs> did not expect how graphic <laughs> it was. I mean, okay, I feel like I should have expected it, but seeing it in real time was just like, wow. My friends and I were like, wow. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it felt very satanic. Right? Very, very cult-like. Yeah. So, <laughs> so like... When he like picked up the costumes to go to this party, I was oh, like, man, what I is totally what is he? About that part. Yeah, I was like, what is he doing? Like, is he bored? Like, the, the, he just like has free time. Like, what is what is mm-hmm. happening? Like, why does he want to go to this party so bad? <laughs> and then he got there, and then I feel like as soon as you saw people in a circle like chanting, mm-hmm. you should have dipped. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, okay, because um, my friend, uh, he made a joke. He was like, bro, like, he's still going. Like, why is he, like, still there? And then, as like, when he was, like, walking through each room, my friend he was like, oh, dude, whatever, whatever happens to him, it's his fault. <laughs> I was like, that's so true. Because why was he still there? Like, the normal person would have booked it. Honestly, like, I, I totally forgot, like, the when he go went to go pick up the costume how mm-hmm. like the the guy the costume shop's daughter was um you know solicited by two older older men and she was like an underage girl yeah and like he friends to call the police and then later on he's actually using her like to in order i can't find a better term but like he was whoring her out you know yeah uh like a, a teenager and he even offered her to bill i was like what the fuck and Mm -hmm. dude didn't even call the police like he just told his wife and that was it at the end of the film Mm -hmm. uh and i'm just gonna like what was so what was the point of that scene you know yeah 
and I know it's in the original story. Like it is in the actual the story it's based on. It's there. <clears throat> yeah. But I didn't see the necessity behind it. You know, the only thing I saw was like she somehow knew which costume he needed to get because she mm-hmm. whispered to him like get this one you know and because mm-hmm. like i saw the subtitles like get the i don't remember which kind but she knew yeah. which one for him to get and that's the only thing like, oh so more people know about this than he realizes mm-hmm. but beyond that it was just a very weird scene to add and nothing came out of it in the end so yeah back to the or- um, back to the orgy Uh, oh i was gonna say like i feel like when i was reading the reviews someone like i think i read an interpretation that like she was supposed to represent like it's like the polar opposite of um tom cruise's and nicole kidman's kid like how she's so innocent and young but like like is it like inevitable in the future that she could like i don't like something related to like loss of innocence kind of deal in the sense you know um bill was supposed to be like this respectable doctor at the beginning of the movie and then he goes down this spiral of like sex and all that so i I, that's an interpretation i read and i was like huh i feel like we're kind of grasping at straws I but think. I wouldn't like I don't disagree with it but I feel like it's hard to interpret this movie after one watch yeah and I think that's like with most Kubrick films where like people they there's always something that's like oh there's hidden meanings behind this he always has hidden meanings and it gets to the point like some people are actually grasping at straws you know yeah like, are, are you sure that's what was really intended like there's the one where I'm pretty sure it's just crossing against Charles. I may be wrong. Where in The Shining, uh, Jack Nicholson's character, he he wears a necktie uh, that has it's green. It has like patterns on it, and it's like oh, it looks very similar to like the the maze in, at the hotel, like the mm-hmm. hedge maze. And I'm like, are you sure? I <laughs> 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 like are we really grasping at stuff? Like y'all keep talking about he's a genius or whatever. Like he just makes connection. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, that that's just like with Kubrick and how people like interpret his films like yeah just grasping at straws so there may be some validity behind it I just had to see more behind what he means by like the parallels between this young woman and uh, this child basically and to, um, Bill's child I there could be some connection there but I just didn't see it at the moment and I still don't yeah. see it now exactly and yeah, so back at the orgy, um, <laughs> I was just thinking like, huh? If I ever go to an orgy, I I don't want <laughs> I, I don't like ceremonies. Like, mm. can we just get to can we get to the <laughs> can we skip the ceremony get to the reception? <laughs> 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 like with weddings, like okay guys, let's let's just celebrate. Like we we get it. They, yeah. They, I do. I do. Kiss. Okay, let's party. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and. The thing I found very interesting is that it's the the music is like a a chanting backwards, you know, it's like recorded um played backwards. And I just found it like, oh, that's like very creepy, you know. Mm-hmm. If I heard that in real time, like out in the out and about in the wild, I'd be like, yeah, I'm out. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. But Tom what I keep saying Tom. <laughs> Bill was like so in his spiral. He was like, "Nah, mm-hmm. I need to cheat on my wife, one way or another." She contemplated mm-hmm. it. I need to cheat on her. <laughs> yeah, and even when like that masked woman was like, "You shouldn't be here. You're in danger," and he still stayed. Yo! I was like, "Bro." <laughs> the fact that like they're all wearing Max right, and she mm-hmm. knew he didn't belong. Yeah. And she's like, you're in danger. I know you don't belong here. Mm-hmm. And he didn't get the hint like, huh, if she knew, if she knows I'm not supposed to be here, even though I'm wearing this. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe I should dip. He didn't take the hint. And I, <laughs> um, I will say like when they, they, when they find out and he's in the circle, right? Mm-hmm. It's very awkward. He's like, what's the second password? Uh, I forgot. And we're like, oh, oh. I was like, okay take off your clothes i feel like mm-hmm. 
in my head, the Red Priest is making it up as he goes. <laughs> uh-huh. I feel like he's like, hey, guys, uh, I don't know. Uh, take off your clothes. What? Yeah, j- Just take it off. Yeah. Yeah. Take it <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, stop. Like the woman saves him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she's punished. And yeah, it's a very weird movie. <laughs> Yeah. And was, honestly, when when he got asked about the second password, and I was like, I bet there's no second password. And there really wasn't. So. <laughs> I would have bluffed and said, like, yo, you got to be kidding me. A second. This whole time. Yo, I'm a spunny. I meant to, to be here. And you tell me there's a second password. Nah. Uh-huh. Y- y'all y'all are some weirdos. I'm out. <laughs> I would have like, mm-hmm. played off like that. But, you know, I have some improv um, training. And I'm sure this doctor mm. didn't. He was too busy yeah. trying to cheat on his wife. And I was just, I was keeping track of like how much money he spent that one night. Um, yeah. So I didn't keep track of everything, but there was 150 for the the prostitute, uh, over mm. 200 for like the rental. I, yeah. I wrote this down, and then there's over 80 bucks for the cab, and you know he he ordered like some drinks like at that bar. This man is balling, you know, and he just has this all in cash. He's just really eager to spend his money. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you think about like when she told him about her dream? Oh, like we're going back to when Nicole Kidman first. No, him? this is after the orgy. She he goes back home. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. And she's like okay. laughing at him. Okay. In. OK, yeah. OK, so when. He first came into the room, and then she was, like, giggling, and then she woke up, and then she started crying. I was like, wait, was she crying in her sleep, or was I just tripping? Was I thought she was laughing. <laughs> and then, um, I don't know. For I don't know. I think in my head, I was thinking, like, oh, my God, like, is is this turning supernatural? Did he, did they, like, invade her mind? <laughs> like, how, how is she right. doing this right now? Yeah, I don't know. I I honestly did not know what to think at the moment, aside from thinking like, oh, th- is, this has to be supernatural because how would else would she know? Unless she is one of the masked women, like right. secretly. But it's like, but I also didn't see how that would correlate. So it was yeah. hard to like make a connection. What's funny is that like. I have I borrowed this book from the library, which is the Stanley Kubrick archives, mm-hmm. and it goes over all. Look how thick it is. I know that's a thick book. <laughs> <laughs> goes over all his films that he made over his career and how they were made, and there were storyboards for the dream sequence. Like at first, he wanted to like show like what she was dreaming. Do you want to see it? It's like, or do you want me to describe it to you instead? Uh, sure, I'd want to see it. Yeah. Okay. So it's sexually explicit. So I'm not gonna show this on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm just. Can you see it? So there's her on a horse. Oh my, oh my God! She's on a horse. Right. And then there's her in the middle of a hill where people are. Fornicating. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Eventually it was scrapped. You know. Yeah. But I was just thinking, like, what was the decision behind that? Probably because, like, it would have been censored anyway. Yeah. Um, this movie did have trouble of being censored in, in, in the process after he he, he died. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm just thinking, like, thematically, like, do you think it worked better, her telling him, like, that way? Or do you think it would be better if they actually showed her dream? Hmm. I think. I liked it as is because I feel like the shock value from the party before was already enough that showing what happened in her dream wouldn't have had like the impact that it would have wanted. And plus it's like, yeah, because since it's her dream, only she knows what happened. So it's really Mm. up to us to imagine like what exactly, you know, was happening. And I feel like that's more impactful as a viewer than seeing it all like displayed out for us. So you think it would have been like too much already? Like we already saw this orgy. Do we really need to see the dream as she's yeah. exploring? Okay. That makes sense. 
And like the only fantasies we see in the film are when Bill is imagining the naval officer with his wife. Yeah. And it's only like glimpses of it. Like, I mean, he's like, you know, he's like punching himself, you know, like not trying not to think of that. I feel like we're kind of going throughout the whole movie, mm-hmm. but I kind of don't want to go through the whole movie. But is there anything else you want to discuss, like you had in your mind that we haven't discussed so far? Like any th- final thoughts? Oh, there was like a point where she was talking about her dream. Mm-hmm. And she said that like, you know, the orgy was happening. And then she said that once Bill was gone from her nightmare, like, it's like the dream got better. <laughs> and in my head, in my head, I was like, bro, does she hate her husband or something? Right. Like, <laughs> The fact, the, I and, feel like she secretly does because like she keeps yeah. telling him like if you have these dreams you kind of don't want to tell your significant other like you don't want to hurt their yeah. feelings like what's going on but she's like very honest you don't have to be that honest mm-hmm. <laughs> all right you were saying yeah okay when he went to um the piano player nick's hotel Mm-hmm. And then the um, receptionist, the hotel clerk person, was like, oh, like, he was being escorted by these security guards, and he had, like, a black eye. And I was like, oh, my God, Bill fucked over his friend right. <laughs> by going to this party. <laughs> like, what and the heck? Not only that, like, the fact that, like, the dude didn't even call the police either. Yeah. <laughs> like, I yo, feel, you... But uh, it's also, I feel like... How much would the police do? Mm. You know? Because, you know, rich people can get away with a ton of things. And, you know, I'm sure there's no doubt that, you know, the police are somewhat aware of what's (laughs) happening, you know? Yeah. I know you said that you zoned out during that part with the, the Bill's friend, you know? Yeah. Um, and when he was, like, explaining what was happening, like, oh, these are just, like, rich people having fun, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, really? That's it? And I thought the plot twist would be so much bigger. Like, right. I, I don't know. Like, it was very underwhelming. Well, and the I thing was like, that, huh. Th- that's the thing, like, I think he was just doing that for damage control at that point. Mm-hmm. There's probably, like, more to it. That's, that, yeah. that's what some people suspect. Like, there's more to it, but he just did it out of his own courtesy, like, you know, Bill helped him out so many times. Like, he's just doing it to save him, to, like, yeah. protect him from going moving th- further with it. Because that mask ended up on the bed while the she was sleeping, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's very scary. Like, oh, they knew the mask. They got it from him before he returned it. And they put it there while she was sleeping. Mm-hmm. That's terrifying. Yeah. So I, I do believe there is generally more to it. But it just wasn't resolved because I guess he figured out, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't fuck around. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you almost found out. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I feel like the, with the runtime, I c- thought there could have been more. Like, I thought they would have messed with them a lot more. Instead of just having, like, like one man following him down the New York City street. Right. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought, like, someone would have, like, seduced her in real time, like, in real life mm-hmm. to, like, mess with him. Like, I thought that was going to happen. Like, one of the people from the orgies, or, like, they, they would invite her there or whatever. But no, that didn't happen. Yeah. I generally thought there'd be more to it. <laughs> yeah, because once we got to the orgy and then, like, him getting the letter of, like, oh, like, don't pry into our business kind of deal i thought it would be it would lean more into like the psychological thriller aspect like i thought we were gonna see tom cruise's character be so messed up from the fear of being watched right but it was that was just it (laughs) that it was what it was and i was like oh a little disappointing and I feel like, like a lot of people would say, like, oh, but, like, there was. You just really, like, need to analyze it more. And I'm like, oh, but, like, sometimes I don't want to analyze that deeply. I kind of want things to happen, you know? <laughs> within the same film, like, yeah. if, it, if, if it's not happening while I'm watching it, or if it's not, like, at least implied a little bit. Yeah. What's the point? 
you know mm -hmm. like you it's two hours and 40 minutes use that time okay yeah, exactly. use it i guess he did use it in his own way but <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with the production of this film And we're back to discuss the production of Eyes Wide Shut. So this movie was developed after Stanley Kubrick read the story from Arthur Schnitzler back in 1968. He wants to follow up a project after he did 2001 A Space Odyssey, which is another film I did see. I wasn't too much of a fan of either. <laughs> so he was interested in adapting the, adapting the story with the help of his journal, the journalist called, um, please don't laugh, his name is Jay Cox. Um, he he bought the filming rights to the novel, and for the following decade, he was trying to figure out how to film this story. Because at first, he wanted to do like a sex comedy, and yeah. starring like Steve Martin or Woody Allen in the main role, but then nothing came of it. The project was revived back in 1994 when he hired Kubrick hired Frederick Raphael to work on the script, and updating the setting to go from 20th century Vienna to late 20th century New York City. And he invited his friend, Michael Herr, who helped write Full Metal Jacket, to make revisions. But he declined because he feared he would be underpaid and had to commit to a lot of production. And this man made the smartest decision ever because, guess what? It would have been underpaid. And he would have gone for a very long production. And he mm. went to, as you know, it's the Guinness World Record of the highest, longest shoot ever. Yeah. G guess guess how many? Or Do you know already? Yeah, it's in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, tell us. It is. It went over fifteen months, and that yes. included included a period where they had an unbroken shoot of forty six weeks. Right. Damn. That's. Yeah, that's wild to me. That. It's that's really, like almost a year. It is a year. <laughs> it basically forty six weeks. No. Forty six weeks. Fifty two. Yeah, six weeks off. Okay. <laughs> okay, but still. <laughs> <laughs> it's practically a whole year you like you guys know each other you guys graduate together essentially from this film yeah <laughs> so when warner brothers president on uh, terry simmel approved production he asked kubrick to cast a movie star so he, he hadn't done it since jack nicholson in the shining and at first he considered casting alec baldwin and kim bassinger but then afterwards he met tom cruise and nicole kidman because they were in england for nicole kidman's film the portrait of a lady after meeting him at his house, like he, the director awarded them the roles, and he managed to make them both commit to to not commit to other projects until this movie was completed. They both signed open-ended contracts where they both agreed to work on the film until Kubrick released them, however long that might be. Mm -hmm. And it was very long, to say the least. That's such a weird contract to do i guess they don't they never made that mistake again but that is very long the way they i think someone said like the way they prostrated themselves for him was something they'd never seen before because he's even then he was considered a legend yeah but damn that's something and also he wanted kubrick wanted a husband and a wife specifically to play the lead roles and mm. he found them you know for yeah. this film and yeah, and he was like psychoanalyzing them too, and like he was basically playing therapist and making them like confess their fears about marriage and commitment, <laughs> and like so they would like talk about like everything and stuff. They even like he even made them sleep in like the character's bedroom. I didn't and, know that. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> and um. And so, like, the scenes with the naval officer where she was, like, having sex with him, mm -hmm. like, I, like when she was, like, filming those scenes, apparently they put, like, they made them do, like, a whole bunch of positions. And then Kubrick forbade, like, he forbid Nicole Kidman from telling Tom Cruise what was happening on set to, like, you know, stir up the feelings of, like, distrust and, like, you know. Wow. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, Kubrick's kind of crazy. <laughs> Dude, like... Yeah. We hear stories of, like, The Shining, mm -hmm. but this is, like, <laughs> his ultimate ultimate film. Like, literally, last thing... Like, what's it called? Like, start, he's just throwing up shit, but, like, what's another one? Uh, another word. Instigating stuff. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
This is like method acting, but like Hon- involuntarily. <laughs> Honestly, like, <laughs> so his whole perfectionism is what led to script pages being rewritten on the set with most scenes requiring numerous takes. So it just went much longer than expected. So like the actress, Vanessa Sean, who was initially contracted for like two weeks, ended up working for them for two months. While the actor, Alan Cumming, who was the one in the one scene as a hotel clerk, he auditioned six times during the filming process. And for that role, well, for what we saw, you don't need to audition six times for that. Mm-hmm. It, it's just a little piss, pisses me off a little bit. Um, I know. I yeah. I I feel like if I got cast in a movie, I'd be very grateful because like ugh, I'm in a movie, you know. But if I had a director who was this anal about like his work, and it's like I'm I was only supposed to be here for like two weeks, and I now I'm doing this for two months and being underpaid, I'd be like, I Is- feel I'd be, I'd feel used. <laughs> That and also like there's other work out there too, you know? Yeah. Like if you're an actor, most of the time you're you're not paid well. You do a lot of other work so you can get paid because it's yeah. it's a career. You don't stay with this a uh, one guy. It's crazy but, but the cinematographer of the film, his name's Larry Smith, he says this is his quote from him. We did occasionally do lots of takes, but it was often more to a logistical problem than acting issues. Stanley didn't do take after take because he enjoyed it or wanted to drive everyone crazy. The scene was either right or it wasn't right, and whether whatever kept it from being right had to be eliminated. It might be something very subtle, like an ashtray facing the wrong way, but Stanley had a phenomenal eye for small details. An ashtray, of all things. Okay. Yeah, I also read that um, uh, Kubrick did repeat takes because he wanted to like break down the actors so that they would be like so exhausted that they just forget that the cameras are there so they're just delivering like raw emotions you know so deliver something new that like the actors weren't like trying for and i feel like this tracks because like shelly duvall in the shining literally had a nervous breakdown when filming and it's like um i also read that tom cruise got an ulcer from like having to like from being so stressed from having to redo takes because wow. i heard that he had to like t- do 95 takes of just walking through a door what yeah i was like oh my god you know what this it- reminds me of um david fincher because he does this shit too mm-hmm. um with the social network and some other films and it's actually related to Lin-Manuel Miranda's story because uh, when he was, we were talking, his friend Jonathan Groff, who played King, mm-hmm. J- the King in Hamilton, yeah. <laughs> he he was in Mindhunter, and at the time it was like new, and it was like directed by David Fincher, and he talked about like how they were doing all these takes, and then Lin's mom was like, "Can't they just rehearse?" And I'm like, "Yeah, can't. Why don't they just rehearse?" Like, nope, that's just his method. That's just the way he does it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm thinking like, yo, that must be torture and then david fincher the the defends this because it's like you spend thousands of dollars hundreds of thousands of dollars of of this to like get this here why just use it for only like like a day and i'm like yeah yeah i get your point but also like we're on a schedule yeah (laughs) if you want them to have the best performance like you say you want to and the way you go through it just have them rehearse you know and Mm. if you feel like they need like better time to adapt to this set you know I don't know how it works in Hollywood. Maybe build it sooner. I don't know. But do they really need to adapt to a set if the movie's scene doesn't take that long? Like, if it doesn't occupy that much space, do you really need yeah. that? Like, I can understand passion behind the project, but there's passion and then there's just pure lunacy Yeah. when it comes to this. Like, it gets to a point like, okay, you need to, like, draw back. Like, just put um pull back a little bit. It doesn't need to be picture perfect okay like Mm -hmm. we all we get the gist of what you're doing it looks great yeah i have a whole different opinions of like these (laughs) directors like they don't need to be like this like it's annoying i've I've heard the same thing about james cameron yeah Um, (laughs) okay i can i can defend him a little bit i i defend james cameron just a little bit because he is iconic but even then i do recognize like he was a he was a dick to people yeah (laughs) <laughs> that yeah i i feel like 
there, there's there's a fine line of like wanting perfection in your craft and being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and these directors they tiptoe this line <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Man, I will forever defend James Cameron. Like when he, people talk shit about Avatar, I'm like, yo, you need to shut up, okay? Shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> um, this goes back to the letterbox story I told you about. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <The hinge thing>. <laughs> <laughs> but like not- honestly, I I like even I'm not like these directors, but I kinda do understand wanting perfection in your craft. Like that that um tiktok slash reel that i made for my birthday where i was like lighting the candle like a cigarette that took me so long it took me like one and a half hours to do that 10 second clip because every time we would record it i'd be like "Mm -mm, i don't like the facial expression i'm doing i don't like the angle up like of my face i don't like the way i'm sitting and then i was like so like if you look closely at that tiktok at the cake you can see the top being messed up because of how many times i jammed the candle into the cake and i we had two slices of cake one for like eating and one for the tiktok (laughs) and so (laughs) so we i was like oh fuck we fucked up this cake this is the eating cake now so we just like (laughs) and we put it away and then we used the new cake (laughs) and in the end i got i got the result i wanted was it worth it I don't know, but I, I I got what I wanted. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> I, I didn't know it was that much. I know you said that in the in the caption, like this took longer than it should have. I didn't know it was that much though. Like yeah, two cakes. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about the lighting. <laughs> I don't like the transition I just did there. <laughs> Let's talk about the lighting in this film. <laughs> um, so Larry Smith made use of available light sources visible in the shots, such as lamps and Christmas lights. So this is like kind of like the method of like using practicals for lighting. You know, you use the lights that are in the scene to light the film. And so when that was insufficient, he used a Chinese paper ball lamp, like one of those mm-hmm. Chinese lamps um, to softly brighten the scene or just like use table lamps as well. They also used different film stocks for this film. And then they finally settled uh, one that was phased out by Kodak. And mm-hmm. as a courtesy for to Kubrick, Kodak get, uh, supplied them with as many rolls of the discontinued film stock as they needed for this film. Which is actually like pretty cool. Like They're like, hey, you know, we discontinued it, but here, take some of what we have. I find that really cool. And we were just briefly talking about, I guess not briefly, but we were talking about his perfectionism. He oversaw... Kubrick oversaw every visual element that would appear in a given frame because before he was a filmmaker, he was a photographer. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he would go over stuff like frame by frame. So stuff from like the props, the furniture, the color of the walls, the color of certain objects. He oversaw every single thing, including the masks that are used in the orgy scene. He oversaw Mm -hmm. everything for that. He would tell production designers and set dressers like exactly what types of lamps he wanted, what types of chairs he wanted, what types of decor he wanted. And he always preferred the best material. So instead of using like wood or plaster, because it's going to be on scene for a few seconds, he yeah. actually wanted the real material. He wanted like them to use like plaster, cement, or brick. And yeah. if they didn't like the color of something, like if they didn't like the color of the wall, they had to like legit just paint it over. Yeah. So very particular. You, you can kind of respect it for a little bit that... Just don't push it. <laughs> and because- yeah, I even I even read that he like specifically gave like a mask to each person. Like, oh, you're you're getting this mask, and I was like, damn, that's that's so anal. <laughs> like, imagine being like, um, I don't like you, so you're getting the worst mask. <laughs> you're getting the one that looks like a butt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're a butthead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's really crazy like you kind of wonder if he did that for personal reasons too like mm. you no know, i don't like the way he looked at me so he's getting the green one <laughs> <laughs> like i don't like the way he walks he walks funny <laughs> mm. um but yeah so with the because there was like limited use of lighting with the li- a lot of like given by the practicals they had to achieve a certain visual effect by push developing the entire film so 
Although, in other words, like they will shoot at the light levels they were presented with that will be considered too low. And then in processing, the lab left the film in the developing math longer, essentially over processing it to bring out the images. It's more evident in the Christmas party in the beginning because mm-hmm. it's almost lit almost exclusively by the Christmas lights. And for Phil Smith used like the portable China ball with a dimmer controlled by a 200 watt bulb or like a small curtain of holiday lights as well. I really like how this was available in the book because I did like the lighting in this film. I did think it was really beautiful. Mm-hmm. And the music was written by Jocelyn Pook. So she was hired after choreographer Yolan Snaith rehearsed the Max Ball Orgy using her composition called Backwards Prius, which features a Romanian Orthodox divine liturgy recorded at the church of Bayamere played backwards as a reference track. So they just used that track to rehearse and they liked it. Uh, Kubrick was like, do you have anything else that's weird for me? And that's why that's how she got hired because of that song. And there are certain controversies uh, regarding this film as you kind of expect with given the topic, but also because of how Kubrick died like six days after showing this to the producers, like the final mm-hmm. product. There's debate over like the film's like final state of completion. So he's known for like editing and working on it until it's released, like on all his movies. Yeah. So Warner Bros. insists that it's his final cut, but it was still in the final stages of post-production. Like they still needed to work on the coloring. They still needed to work on the audio. And people have argued like if he needed to work on it some more, there's probably just like some small minor technical stuff that he needs to edit, but it probably wasn't like that much he needed to work on. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of like what they had. You know what they should have done? To like finish off the movie, they should have taken out forty minutes of this movie. <laughs> Honestly, but that is, I think that was actually part of the contract. They couldn't do that. Oh, they either. couldn't cut it. I I think so. But I'm gonna talk, oh, I'm gonna go over like his death real quick. Yeah. So writing for Vanity Fair, his collaborator. Kubrick's collaborator back with her recalled a phone call from the director regarding the cut that would be screened for the Warner Bros. executives four days before his death. And he said there was a looping to be done and the music wasn't finished. Lots of small technical fixes on color and sound. What would I show work that wasn't finished? He had to show it to Tom and Nicole because they had si- they had to sign um, nudity, nudity releases and to Terry Simmel and Bob Daly of Warner Brothers. But he hated it that he had to and I could hear in his voice that he did. And then Garrett Brown, who is the inventor of the Steadicam, by the way, He's the GOAT. He considers Eyes Wide Shut to be an unfinished film. He said, I think Eyes Wide Shut was snatched up snatched up by the studio and Stanley died. And they just grabbed the highest number avid edit and ran off of it as if it was a movie. But it was three months before the movie was due to be released. And I don't think there's a chance that this movie, this is this was the movie that he had in mind or the music track. And it had a lot of other things. It's a great shame because you know it's out there, but, but it doesn't feel to me as if it's, it's really his film. So... That's just some opinions. Like, it's probably not his final film. But then there's people like his daughter says, like, yeah, it's his final film. You know, like, it's what he had envisioned. Yeah, I I read that, like, Kubrick was very proud of the Mm -hmm. film. Like, he considered it his greatest contribution to filmmaking. (laughs) Yeah. So I feel like, I feel like, yeah, there could have been, like, minor edits made. But overall, I think this is probably what he wanted. <laughs> like, if you've seen 2001 A Space Odyssey, it, it, he's kind of like that in general, like with his films. Like, it's very mm-hmm. long, convoluted. But yeah, I may get some hate for this. But yeah, guess what? It's my opinion. You can't change that. So, this movie was censored and there were con- contractual obligations for them to have an R rating. So, Warner Brothers digitally altered the orgy for the film's American release by blocking out the graphic sexuality with extra hooded figures. And people got pissed at that. Like, yo, it's not his vision. And yeah, it's how I imagine like how people like change words on social media today so they don't get blocked by TikTok. So like, for yeah. example, you can't say kill. You have to say unalive. Yeah. I'm like, just say the word, you know, but it's not mm-hmm. like their fault. Like the co- the algorithm would block them if they say the word kill. Yeah. So they had to use unalive but i can't take them seriously if they say the word unalive uh yeah donate to the unalive foundation like the prevent unalive foundation i'm like (laughs) (laughs) 
just just say the word <laughs> and do you remember that story like how julia fox did understand like mascara meant like sexual assault <laughs> no i don't think i know that one or well, actually maybe i do but it's not yeah. coming to mind yeah it's like it's it gets so bad like these words that have no connection whatsoever is used for something completely different. Like there was this one, I I found out that mascara meant like rape or whatever. Like I, something like I shared my someone took my mascara like means like they were raped or whatever. And then Julia Fox is like, I don't think that's too bad. Like that someone took your mascara. He's like, wow, you support sexual assault? Like whoa, there is no yeah. indication in this video that that was what's going on. She thought you were talking about makeup being stolen. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I don't... Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard mascara used that's in the, that term. And that's the thing. It's like for people who are like so chronically online, they come up with their own term and then get mad when people don't understand what they're saying. Yeah. But, Usually uh, when I try to like censor my words, I just like... I replace the letters with numbers. So like E with three, S's with fives. Because I feel like that's just easier. Right. Like you, people know what you mean, right? But then the algorithm won't like catch you. And this reminds me of how like whenever I would post like Instagram story, and I would say like KMS for like a joke, and then right. Instagram would send, they would take it down, and then they would send me like a little warning that's like, "Are you okay? <laughs> Do you need to talk to someone?" And I was like, "Oh my god, no, <laughs> I don't actually mean it." Yeah. So. That's kind of why you had to like do that, but like, I think what's the f the thing with censorship is like you need to understand the context, and sometimes context can be lost, and especially in social media, you know, mm. especially with what happened with Julia Fox, the context was lost, was nowhere yeah. near that she she wouldn't have had a clue. But anyway, for the censorship for this film, they obscured it so that it wouldn't get an NC seventeen rating, which would have looked very heavily limited them from having a wider audience than an yeah. R-rated film would have. Because it was also, there were some video stores that didn't carry NC-17 films. That was Netflix back then, basically. That yeah. was how people, <laughs> that was how people yeah, for, watched the movies. For the, for the Gen Zs, <laughs> that was the Netflix back in the day. <laughs> Blockbuster was something else back then, all right? You yeah. think you, y'all are spoiled with Netflix? No, we have Blockbuster. Remember um, Redbox? <laughs> <laughs> I still have one at my gas station. <laughs> I know, yeah. I still have one too. And I'm like, do people like still use this? Like, why is this still here? <laughs> there are also some people like also um, critical because he had never been uh, shy of a harsh rating because A Clockwork Orange was X-rated when it first came out. And he wasn't mm -hmm. shy with that. But it's eventually the, the unrated versions of I, Why, Eyes Wide Shut was released on uh, DVD, HD DVD, and Blu-ray. 2007 and here are some <laughs> notes i took from the stanley kubrick archives so that newspaper article about the dead woman they actually like screenshotted it and showed it in this book hold on it's actually like legible i can find it wait what screenshot so like that newspaper article he read about the lady who died and he puts two and two together and realized oh that's the woman that oh, was at the oh. orgy yeah yeah so i know i have it here somewhere yeah right here It's like oh, a legit yeah. article. They actually put they actually put the something into it, and it basically gives like no so like like how like the last night she was alive like people saw there were two security guards, and I was like yo, that's like very similar to like what happened to the other guy. Yeah. Soon and right here it says the well, very last sentence says soon after her hiring, Vitali Empire insiders were reporting that their boss adored Curran, which is like the woman's name. Not for how she wore his stunning clothes in public, but for how she wowed him by taking them off in private, seductive solo performances. So, it could mean, you know, lap dances, but I was also thinking, like, you know, the orgies. And yeah, I was kind of, I was kind of surprised that she turned out to be the woman who was like o who OD'd at the beginning of the movie that the party mm -hmm. I legitimately thought she was gonna be that prostitute like uh, Domino I because did too. I was like yeah because like when she, like the masked woman approached her approached Bill and was like oh you don't belong here like you need to leave I literally thought that like she knew like mm -hmm. she knew him 
because this, this was all on the same night. So it, I just felt like it kind of made sense. Right. Like it felt, it felt like, like out of nowhere that it was like this random woman who OD'd at the beginning. Right. And oh yeah, that's basically because I I also mentioned like the commission drawings by Chris Baker, which I showed you. Um, but because I'm not going to show that on YouTube, uh, I can describe it. So it's like you know NSFW drawings, you know, um, and some of the includer being, you know, on top of a horse with a man doing activity with her, and, and then also her on top of a hill with several bodies around her arriving in pleasure. So yeah, some notes from there. <laughs> Have you watched How I Met Your Mother? Yes. Do you remember that uh, episode where Barney was like, oh, there are so many sports that you can have sex, like, you can have sex during. And, like, that the drawing of the horse just reminded me of that episode. I'm just like, damn, so, like, horseback riding? You can do that. <laughs> I don't remember the episode, but, like, that sounds very much like Barney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I want to talk about How I Met Your Mother one day because I was obsessed with that show back in high school and mm. I was so mad at the ending. Like, just that whole last season, I was mad. I didn't even watch the last episode and when someone told me about it, I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to watch it. Just, it's not worth it. I yeah, was really I'm like mad. currently re-watching it. I put it as background noise when I exercise <laughs> and I'm on the last season. So I'm like, ah. Uh. It's hard to watch because <laughs> yeah. it's literally just about one weekend. And you yeah. don't need to stretch it out for like 20 episodes, however long it is. Y you don't need yeah. to. Um, but yeah. Anything else you wanted to know? Anything else you learned? Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Um, like we've talked about how Tom Cruise's acting is kind of off in this movie. So like relating back to how Kubrick likes to do like a lot of re retakes. So... I read that he also refused um, screen dailies, which is like when you show the actors like the unedited raw footage, um, which I thought was surprising because like I feel like actors rely on that to like, you know, right. have a consistent performance. So so therefore it made it hard for Tom Cruise to be consistent with his acting because he didn't know which one of with the many takes that he did would end up as the final product in the movie. Mm. So I was like, oh, I feel like that makes so much sense why his acting feels a bit off because he's kind of just like, he's kind of just he's acting. Confused. <laughs> yeah. And like, um, I also read something about how like, you know, like with the masks, you know, obviously there's like a, there's a theme with it. There's a motif mm. about the masks and like wearing disguises. And then I read something I don't know if this is like an interpretation just that like is accepted by anyone but I think I read that the point of Tom Cruise's acting like being bad because his face is kind of like blank a lot of the times like I feel like there's like not m m like many emotions going on um, and I the point of that is for like the viewer to like project themselves onto <laughs> like this blank canvas and I was like Hmm. Interesting theory. Right. I feel, I feel like I feel like he was probably just tired <laughs> from doing so many retakes. But with art, there's only so many interpretations, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, unlimited. Yeah. That's really interesting. I didn't I didn't think about that. Alright, I think that's pretty much it, unless you got anything else. I mean I I read that Kate Blanchett did the voiceover dub for the mask. Oh yeah, yeah, she, which was she like also... surprising. Yeah, because like they didn't say that when she, it was released. It was like re um, yeah, revealed I, it, much it, later. It, yeah, yeah. Apparently, it's because the actress who played the mask woman couldn't do a convincing American <laughs> accent. Yeah, and I was like, huh. I feel like, I feel like since she was masked a lot of the time, you couldn't just hire an American actress with like right? a similar body type <laughs> i'm sure there were plenty yeah um, i totally forgot that to mention but like the reason this was filmed in you know england is because Stanley kubrick has such a fear of, of flying mm -hmm. 
mm, he yeah. refused to actually go there. So like they actually had to scout people to go shoot footage in New York. That's why mm-hmm. Tom Cruise is on a treadmill with rear projection of him walking through the streets because Stanley Kubrick did not want to fly to New York. He was so afraid of flying. <laughs> I know. I did read about that. And I was like, wow, that's next level. Like right. having to recreate the New York City streets. At Pinewood Studios. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I wouldn't have even known because I was I was very genuinely convinced that was New York City that they were filming in. Right, right. It looked convincing. Yeah. That concludes our conversation today. Thank you so much, Sophia, for being back here uh, to talk about Eyes Wide Shut. Yeah, I wish my eyes were shut during this movie. <laughs> I guess that's a hint towards your answer. Was Eyes Wide Shut a hit or a miss with you? I will say it was a miss for me. Yeah, I, for me, it's really hard because I don't want to say it's a miss and I don't want to say it's a hit. Yeah. For the first time in this podcast history, it's an unclear. (laughs) I am unclear on what I think about this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Stanley Kubrick, you did this to me. (laughs) Um, So, Sophia, where can we find your social media? You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterboxd. On the same username, eat my fanny with three N's. Is it like F or PH? PH, because my last name is Fan. Okay. With an I E, not a Y. Okay, awesome. One more time for the people in the back who didn't hear you. I, I think <laughs> Jim. I don't mean Jim Henson heard you. <clears throat> So my user is eat my fanny. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I need a drink first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it for today, folks. You've been listening to the Hit List Podcast. My name is Jason, and until next time, cross off a new film from your list. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>